Recently, we asked for you to call in your question to Hard Questions Hotline. Listen as we attempt to answer one of those calls. While watching last night Hard Questions, I was, uh, I was quite surprised when they had the question, can you put tattoos on your body? And they said there was no place in Scripture um, that said that and that they thought that there was nothing wrong with it. And would you please ask them to look at um, Leviticus? chapter 19, verse 28. And in the King James Version, it says, "Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you, for I am the Lord. In the NIV, it simplifies it even further, and it says, um, do not cut yourself. Uh, I don't have that one. Up now. Do not cut or put tattoos on your body. I am the Lord. So please let them have a look at that and maybe make a... Um, um, uh, another a comment. Your query about tattoos and their biblical context is insightful and raises several points. Here's a summary of what the Bible says about tattoos, along with some contextual analysis. Leviticus 19.28. This is the primary verse that addresses tattoos directly. It says, Do not cut your bodies for the dead or put tattoo marks on yourselves. I am the Lord. This command was part of the Mosaic law given to the Israelites. The context indicates that tattoos were associated with pagan rituals and practices which God's people were to avoid. Cultural context. In ancient times, tattoos were often linked to pagan worship and idolatry. By prohibiting tattoos, God was setting his people apart from the surrounding nations and their practices. Holiness is not legalism. Whatever people used to think holiness was, it just became a mess and a nightmare and really turned a lot of people off. Because holiness became not smoking, not drinking, not cussing, not dancing, not playing cards, not going to parties, not wearing pretty clothes, not wearing any, any makeup, <clears throat> no jewelry, not having a nice hairstyle. You, you had to cut or not cut your hair depending on which brand of religion you followed. And God forbid that you have a tattoo or if you're a man, put an earring in your ear. I mean, that will just put the religious people over the edge. I've been there, done that. Well, look at, look at those tattoos. The New Testament does not specifically mention tattoos. This silence suggests that the emphasis on distinguishing God's people through physical marks was not a central concern in the New Covenant. Christian liberty. In the New Testament, the focus shifts to the heart and inner transformation rather than external marks, e.g. Romans 14. 123 discusses matters of personal conviction and liberty. Anybody want to talk about that? Now, see, some of you think it's fine, and some of you think, it, man, you get a tattoo, you're on your way to hell. <laughs> and you're free to think what you want to. But you're not free to judge people who do what you don't think they should do. <laughs> Isaiah 49:16. Behold, I have indelibly imprinted or tattooed a picture of you on the palm of each of my hands. A tattoo artist heard me say that, and it's really a neat story. I don't know if I can get the whole thing out right, but he had gone through the most hellish thing. First of all, he had bipolar disorder. And so his mind was already kind of messed up. And then a bunch of religious Christians got him convinced that because he was a tattoo artist that he was going to hell. But when he heard me say that I wanted to get a tattoo that said, I belong to the Lord, or I belong to Jesus, he said he decided to go back into business. <laughs> you got to be careful when you got influence on people. Body as a temple. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20 emphasizes that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. This can be interpreted to mean we should treat our bodies with respect and consideration of what honors God. Avoiding worldliness, Romans 12, 2, advises Christians not to conform to the patterns of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of the mind. This suggests a need to evaluate whether certain practices align with a Christ-centered life. And I got earrings and pretty clothes 
and makeup, and you ought to be glad I got it. I mean, why in the world would we think that God is colorless and boring and wants everything to be ugly and no fun and just give you a bunch of rules and regulations? Let me tell you something. The Bible says that God sits in the heavens and laughs, and he put a laugh in every one of us because he expects us to use it. We need to laugh and 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 laugh. And laugh. So we need to pursue holiness. We need to add works to our faith. We need to realize that we're the billboard for God. People want to see you happy. People are desperate to be happy. They don't need a bunch of people calling themselves Christians that look like they've been baptized in prune juice. Motivation. Consider why you want a tattoo. Is it to honor God, express your faith, or for another reason? Reflect on whether your motivation aligns with biblical principles. Permanence. Think about the permanent nature of tattoos. Consider how you might feel about the tattoo in the future and whether it will still reflect your beliefs and values. And so, uh, yes, there is script. There is a uh, uh, Bible in the Old Testament that uh, forbids tattoos, um, but you got to know who he's talking to. And if you're a Gentile, he ain't talking to you. Now, if there is a personal conviction that you have um, based on the reading of that scripture and you feel like getting a tattoo um, would violate your conscience, then you should not get a tattoo. As long as what you feel violates your conscience isn't something you turn around to attempt to violate somebody else's conscience with. <laughs> yeah, um, for me, I have no problem with, with tattoos, especially, uh, I actually love tattoos that honor Christ, that, that glorify God, that people you know, wear as a testimony wherever they go, wherever their fields are in, and it's their mm -hmm. way of communicating the gospel. Um, 24 7 wherever they can and so or I don't even have problems with tattoos as just beautiful symbols of self-expression I'd say for me I'm not a big fan of tattoos that make it seem like you are, uh, belong to somebody else I think that right. maybe covers more of the original intent uh, of that that verse you know somebody something that says I belong to this person or, or anything like that but likewise I don't have a problem with tattoos that are you know a tattooed wedding ring for somebody who's in construction or something like that where it's better for for their safety so you know, and saying, hey, I, this is a lifelong commitment for me. I think a big thing, you know, a lot of people say, you know, because t tattoos are permanent, but I also rest in the fact that we receive a new glorified body when we enter into eternity. So, so I'd say we, tattoos aren't even permanent, or well, they might be permanent here, but they're not eternal. So I uh, keep that in mind. While the Old Testament links tattoos to pagan practices and prohibits them, the New Testament does not address them directly indicating a shift in focus from external practices to internal transformation. Therefore, whether to get a tattoo is a matter of personal conviction and discernment. Considering biblical principles such as honoring God with our bodies and avoiding conformity to worldly patterns, ultimately, the decision to get a tattoo should be made thoughtfully, prayerfully, and with consideration of how it aligns with your faith and commitment to God's teachings.